Hello and welcome to Show of Truth, Embodied Leadership in the New Paradigm. I am here interviewing Lawrence Lanoff, who is an amazing, uh, he's amazing many things, but today I'm going to interview him on the topic of prosperity and what is prosperity and uh, pick his brain a little bit and his heart and his mind and body a little bit about what prosperity means to him and how we can all access prosperity uh, because I believe that everyone has access to it and I would like to learn more from him so I would like you to introduce yourself a little bit and share like what's most current for you in all of the projects that you're creating as I know you have your toes in several different things and um, what's most live for you with regards to either prosperity or your current work and what you're offering and how people can participate with you in that. Yeah, those are all good things. So, um, so let's start at the beginning, yeah. which I'll tell you a little bit about kind of me and how I arrive here. Um, in a nutshell, I have been on my spiritual path since I was about four and a half years old. And because of my life circumstances, I, you know, started a quest to try to figure out what the hell was going on on this planet. And that started at about four and a half. And part of that, because I grew up in New York City, part of that was figuring out and understanding this kind of relationship with prosperity, money, abundance, cash, um, work in general, and, and how that tied into the spiritual path. So in the beginning of my path, I thought they were mutually exclusive because that's kind of what the teaching is. The, the, the common teaching was, especially back in the day, was like, um, prosperity, like if you're doing prosperity, you're not doing your spiritual path. It was kind of right. Like, like you're, if you're an aesthetic, that's like renouncing all worldly stuff and following exactly. just spirit. And, and that's a fascinating approach, but I feel like that approach was great. Like 2000 years ago, it was probably even relevant you know, probably was even relevant a couple hundred years ago. But as we move into the age of technology, so we're having a meeting over Zoom. Yeah. Um, you know, this is a miracle. I mean, we're in different parts of the world. We're connected by this, this thing that is the internet. <laughs> and we can have um, this we can do the impossible if you if you talked about doing this even 50 years ago it would have sounded like space age so as technology and digitizing comes into life that i i predicted this in my book so one of the things i do is i write and i like to write creatively i also like to write about expanding consciousness and you know share share my insights on my spiritual path but i very quickly realized that um that technology and spirituality were sort of on a on a collision course and how people adopted to this collision course was going to uh, adapted to this collision course is going to change how we, you know, how we move ahead as a culture. And for the most part, I don't think we're doing it all that well, to be <laughs> honest, but, um, but part of it is because the mythologies, like you just said, the uh, kind of the idea of the ascetic who sets aside everything um, and just, you know, just, listens to spirit like that was great in a different world but in this world where we're connected through phones technology electricity ideas 
YouTubes, you know, all these ways of sharing, um, that's just not possible. So it, it, it puts you in touch with what is possible. And then that's part of what brings us to this conversation. Yeah. Like, you know, it also puts you in touch with what, what I would call upward social comparison, which is kind of the kryptonite of the ascetic lifestyle. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. So there's been a couple um, points right. that you've shared about that I would like, if you're okay with me expanding on right now, I would like to um, really go in, like just a little bit into this aesthetic sure. thing. And the reason being that first, I uh, have a yoga teacher that expresses the humor in how his teacher is like, you want to know what the highest level of yoga is? <laughs> it's having a job <laughs> and having a family and like being in the world. Um, and that definitely speaks to what you're saying is in, in a way for me, I feel like it's advanced yoga to try and bring these spiritual practices out into our world and like somehow merge them. So I understand how white people might be doing quote poorly in this. And um, in my own journey, I focused on the spiritual qualities as things I wanted more of. So in all of my planning and what I was creating for the future as a child and up until very recently has been, I'm going to cultivate these qualities like unconditional love, inner peace, you know, resiliency, trust, devotion, uh, bliss, joy, ecstasy. And I thought in my ignorance that having these spiritual qualities was more, was almost more benevolent than seeking money. And that as a direct association, if I followed these qualities that I would inherently have financial prosperity. And I will be an attest to that that's not actually how it works. And I'm wanting to hear a little bit of wisdom for you on how it doesn't necessarily, like money is its own thing. Money is its own frequency. And just because you have peace, love, joy in your heart and are spiritually minded person doesn't mean that you're going to have money. And how... It's like, my question for you is how can we interact with it in a way that it's like, you're on purpose. I experience you as being on purpose. So how do you remain on purpose and, in, and integrate having a lot of money and remain in integrity with spiritual principles? It seems like that could be a really confusing soup um, for people to navigate. And what would you say about navigating that? Like, making that in a into a beautiful suit versus like a messy shit show. <laughs> right, right. I mean, this is, this is great, right? So, so this is exactly what I was talking about. I, I actually predicted this conversation in my book that I wrote back in the early 2000s. Because it's, it's inevitable that, as I said, you know, prosperity and spirituality were on a collision course. Many, many things are. You're seeing the world trying to navigate this. Yeah. So what you're, what you're navigating and what you see me um, essentially when you say on purpose, what I am is I'm like in the world but I also am exceedingly aware of reality with a small r. So I never lose touch with reality, ever, yeah. ever, ever, which is, which is a fascinating thing for both spirituality and for prosperity. I know a lot of um, spiritual people who lose touch with reality, and I know a lot of, like, quote-unquote materialistic, you know, people who are just bankrolling who also lose touch with reality yeah um they're both opposite sides of a similar coin which is us trying to navigate how to how to live in this fairly well exceedingly complex high-speed world 
So yeah. number one is you are absolutely correct. And we're going to lose people on this conversation who are like, no, 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 it's all about the heart. And if you're just in your heart and in your spiritual practice, everything flows. But no, money fact, doesn't care about that. <laughs> right. It isn't true. Fundamentally, that, that's an incorrect thing because I was positive that every problem would be solved as I attained levels of consciousness. And now in probably my sixth iteration of, you know, I use this in air quotes. I don't, I don't, unfortunately, I don't have an English word that isn't filled with like chaos, but I'll just say this is probably like my sixth level, somewhere between six and 10 of like massive awakenings. And, you know, my, prosperity level didn't change until I focused differently. And that process, because it's, it's fascinating, Shannon, because we both spent our time you know, cultivating these spiritual practices, I was basically living in a spiritual cave on planet Earth for at least 30 years. Hmm. And it wasn't really until I would say somewhere in the last five years, maybe seven years, that I started going like, wait a minute here. You know, this is, I need to shift my focus mm -hmm. and I need to start conquering the mythologies that I have around money because you can be spiritually awake and poor and nobody will know and nobody cares. Yeah. And it was like, it was like fascinating because then you just it's sort of like taking the path of the wounded healer but it's yeah. now the wounded broke healer you're right right just the suffering. wounded broke and probably now doesn't have food healer <laughs> right you know and they're and they're suffering you know for the greater good of humanity because yeah. that was the mythology that was the story that we were all handed it's like i've done it um, i'm working my way out <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you have you have to. I mean, you it, it is impossible to be a happy, healthy human without flow. Flow is everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're energetic beings. So you understand the, the flow of energy. Yeah, um, you understand you know, you understand the flow of sex energy, the importance of that. Um, you have to, you know, you want to, you want all of it. You want to understand the flow of everything. And everything that works is in flow because flow is life. So yeah. to arbitrarily say, oh, okay, well, I'm going to flow in all these things, but I'm going to block cash, which is what most people do because they believe that cash is a bad thing. When in reality, of course, cash is just, it's no different than this computer or the microphone or anything else we're using or the telephone. You can use it, you know, you can make a call to connect with a family member or a friend or to have a you know, a podcast or you can make a call to set up, you know, a robbery. Yeah. It's not the technology it's where we were coming from. Yeah. That's, and that's really the bottom line. And so cash is, cash is a flow. It's a living thing. That's yeah. the first thing. If I'm going to give you a new paradigm, cash is alive. It is an animal. It has a hunger, it has a desire, it moves through the world looking for opportunities. That's all it's doing. It's always looking for opportunities to sort of expand itself. And if you are not open to those opportunities and those possibilities, then things will come your way and go. You won't see them because cash is about expansion. Yeah. So the first uh, thing, 
Yeah, the first thing to understand is just cash doesn't care. It's just an energy. And it's yeah. always looking to expand. Always, always, always. Mm -hmm. And so if you understand everything is flow, then the only thing to understand about cash and money and prosperity is what ways do you have to tap your flow into that flow? What ways? I, 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 I like, I hear all of this and I still feel very frustrated about this whole topic. Um, it's like, what is the linking point? I mean, I'm just right now, my awareness is on somehow holding a bridge for the people who are spiritual and have the sort of the qualities that we're all looking for. And then the people who have the money, but maybe not the qualities and somehow like bridging those people so that there's not so much of a gap. And I know that's what's like happening right now. And there's this like resolution that's taking place as far as what is power you know, how do we use our power? What is like sort of value system? And I know at least in my life and a lot of my friends' lives, we're all actively questioning these things to see how we can affect positive change because like stuff's just not working. Uh, so in that, like understanding that, okay, money has been used by people that don't necessarily care about other people or are doing things with the money that exploits the earth's resources, et cetera. Um, so I myself personally want to have more money than I do for actually the purpose of funding things changing on the planet. Um, sure. And, you know, that would require like a substantial amount of money at, sure. a cert at any one given amount of time. And I know it's not just me, but it's also in others that I've seen that are all that are spiritual or healers or wanting to make a difference that there's this like threshold that has to be crossed of, okay, I know how to make money doing what I did before. I know how to make money, but how do I make money while what's been revealed to me is this new set of standards and a new trajectory of what I feel like is in, in integrity. And it's kind of confusing because the way I used to make money is out of integrity with a lot of my values now. So how can that bridge be like, that gap be bridged more uh, in the, like, cause I'm sure you understand what I'm saying with regards to- for sure. Yeah, for sure having had ways of making money that might have been easy but now there's like a change of heart and a change of mind and body and so those avenues aren't really desired anymore but money is still desired so how does someone find that that new flow amidst the still transforming self like that's kind of a question i've seen a lot and a tension point i see a lot for people for sure. I mean, you're, that's a very common, that's going to be a common thing with anything in life, if that makes any sense. Um, right. So anything you do, any, literally anything at some point, if you change your relationship changes to the thing that was right, we're all changing all the time. Yeah. So, um, so part of what I do for myself is I, the, the difference in kind of my, um, approach now is to use the energy that I am in and have cultivated what we would call spiritual energy, but focusing the flow of that energy on the expansion of cash specifically. Mm -hmm. um, so that in essence, let's say you have an awakening of some kind, right? And you go, oh my God, I can't work in a cubicle anymore. I need to do something else. I just have to, right? I've got to, I can't, it's just too, too much conflict. I've, I've had that in various moments in my life. Yeah. I don't, I'm not looking through, through that window so much anymore. Um, because I feel like this is a very, it's a complex subject with a lot of nuance. Yeah. Um, 
And so, but what I can tell you is it's very simple. If you understand that a way to think about it is like how you think about things, how you imagine things, how you meditate on things, how you sort of experience life through your vehicle, that, um, that where you put your focus becomes very important. So what I like to do now is put my focus in such a way that I'm expanding my consciousness and focusing the expansion of consciousness on the expansion of cash. And not really worrying about the form so much as much as opening my awareness to be open to opportunity. And if you're a traditionally spiritual, if you come from a traditionally spiritual background, that in itself is a revelation. Just that mm -hmm. one idea, right? Just wait, I can take my expanded awareness and shift it towards cash and I'm not going to go to hell, what? Or go to the bardo. Um, and as you start to understand those more complex thoughts, what you're doing in essence is opening your consciousness to possibility. So I don't think there is a path to what you're talking about, but rather there's an expansion of awareness and consciousness into the physical world that still allows you to be based in who you are. At Thank your core. You. Yeah. I'm expanding my consciousness right now. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, as you should. I mean, I do this every day because, because, and you know, the other thing we, you know, we have to do and we have to share with people listening to this is like really the idea of just total forgiveness for all the stuff you got wrong to this point. And when I say wrong, I don't mean morally wrong. I just mean incorrect. Like you had an incorrect map and that incorrect map causes a lot of pain. Like, believe it, you know, I remember, I remember early, early, early on in my spiritual path, um, you know, I have this incredible jacket that I had bought with my hard earned money. And I was like, 19 years old and it's just this beautiful jacket that I loved um and it was like this Italian super duper special leather awesome amazing and I remember I was heading to um at that time I was heading to uh to Oregon to hang out with Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh and I remember one of the sannyasin at the time was like you know, you know, you're going to have to give all that stuff up. And I felt so conflicted and so ashamed about all that, just having to like, you know, let go of everything. And, and I realized that now, of course, looking back, like, of course, they wanted me to give it up because they wanted to continue to fund their venture. So I was to sell everything and give them the proceeds. And you know, when I look back at that, it's just hilarious. The magic trick was right there, right? Which is, you know, we're more spiritually evol evolved than you, so give us your money. And and it's it's kind of cute when you look back now, like like you have the wrong map and make decisions based on that incorrect map. But then those decisions cause a lot of pain and suffering for individuals and families. I've watched people destroy their families doing that kind of stuff. So there is this level of forgiveness that we have to have. You, you can't move ahead without like this, almost a total forgiveness. I mean, it is a total forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And really, really, like every time you feel pain and pangs, and even as I'm having this conversation, I'm like, oh, damn, there's something else I need to really lean into and forgive. Because yeah. I can't go back and change it. Carrying it with me isn't what I want because I love to stay in, you know, 
elevated ecstatic states of consciousness yeah and and worrying you know being angry about being duped which is essentially what happened um <laughs> that, you know that doesn't make sense right because because i'm it's like it's like that's something that happened long ago i don't want to why am i carrying that now yeah but you carry it now because your mind thinks that oh if i'm still angry about this it's going to protect it from happening in the future or it's going to you know somehow change the past because the mind has no sense of time um so it's just like yeah i'll be angry now and that'll that anger will somehow change the past which of course it can't but it doesn't know that so so the balance is in essence you have to be the butterfly and the the worm in essence the caterpillar and shed everything yeah everything just like yeah that didn't work boom yeah i messed that up yeah i got that wrong yeah 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 all of that goes away yeah so you yeah. have space to cultivate more of what you want and that is really where people get into trouble um because yeah. instead of letting go they hold on and then the attention is on the hurt instead of what they want mm -hmm. and that's our dilemma that's always our dilemma. Yeah. we're always that yeah yeah i'm noticing my mind's doing that right now even um yeah. <laughs> I'm also like, hey, it's kind of actually better for the ones that it's totally not true, but um the ones who make who knew how to make money and then became spiritual after, they still know how to make money <laughs> versus like uh the the path I took was not really ever learning how to make money and just going straight for spirituality and then uh reaching states of enlightenment and then realizing like at some point I think I need to just focus on money now because this isn't like this magical potion of spiritual enlightenment to translate to money isn't necessarily like direct <laughs> of like right. oh the enlighten the enlightening path of doing my best to stay equin equanimous amidst attempting to have more money <laughs> right and i noticed when i was expanding in my consciousness my consciousness could expand and I had this experience of expanding consciousness. But then when I went to sort of channeling that energy into more expansion of money, um, it actually was, there's blocks there. Like my mind's high, like hijacking it. And uh, so work, right. more work is to be done. Yeah, I mean, um, there's always more There's work no magic done. pill. Yeah, there's no magic pill. Like it's, but, the closest thing I have to magic is change your mind. Yeah. Be focusing, like, like if you open your consciousness to the, that money is not moral. Right. It's not a moral. It's no, you can use anything for anything. So if you, if you can take that idea in, um, we're good. If you can't and you're in the morality of it, then it still becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. And, and so we want to kind of move beyond morality. So it's like, it's more like, okay, I'm freeing myself of my past limited thinking so i am more open to future possibility and really this is that's what this is about it's not it's not that we you know it's it's not necessarily that we chose a spiritual path on our path um then it's more that we closed the door to the other thing because of our belief in immorality mm -hmm. or, or action 
So if you can expand your mind to the point of saying, well, you know, it's no different. You can use a phone in a hundred thousand different, but in a billion different ways, um, some of those will be bad for some people, but it, if you don't use the phone, you're out of the game completely. You're not even in the game. Right. So it's, it's learning to live more nuanced and then kind of release whatever beliefs were of the past and then step into being open to the ways in which money can come to you in ways that are more in alignment with how you want to live. That's really the, it's, it's like obviously easier said than done, but one of the steps is total forgiveness. It has, you have to yeah. completely forgive everyone, everything, just bloop. And kind of, you're going to, you might have to do that for months. I mean, I'm doing some version of that every day. Yeah. Because if we don't do that, then, then you know we're screwed. So. Forgiveness is really important. I thank you for that reminder. Um, get to my forgiveness practices. <laughs> What's that? I said, get to my forgiveness practices. Uh, uh, get to the get to thy desk and thy phone and thy forgiveness. Right. Yeah, because because then you can start, then you can kind of start fresh, and just be open. And really, the secret to cash is being open. It's like turning your mind towards what are the opportunities because cash is alive. And it's always on the move. Yeah. And it likes to be shared and spread and yeah, played it's always with. Fluid. And Absolutely. Moving. So. Moving and grooving. Yeah. So, well, I mean, some, so I hear from you like forgiveness. And I also know a little bit about, a little bit about you. And I know that, um, I don't know if you call yourself this, but I would consider you some form of a yogi ish type person. <laughs> And yeah, I'm just yeah, going to yeah. distinguish a yogi is to me is just someone who has regular practices of connecting with whatever you have at the all that is self, um, greater yeah. consciousness. Yeah, for sure, um, for sure. yeah. And, uh, the meat and bones of this would be, and this is like where I've, I'm going to lose myself even, but is that, um, <laughs> I'm joking. It's really about just practicing being more aware and uh, well, essentially forgiving that which is still tense and causing like disease, but also creating more expansion. So anything that brings about expansion would be like physical practices um, that bring you into a greater sense of relaxation in your body. I know that you teach that. Um, yeah. Is there anything else that you that you do and that you practice and that you teach that is, um, and not necessarily like what you might recommend everyone because everyone has their own thing, but what are constants for you that you will never give up because you know that they're integral to having the life that you want. Right, so the constant is feeling good. What are you doing to optimize your the way in which you move through the planet so you know the basics the, really this is what the yoga is all about yoga is about having your body be strong and supple to handle the kind of physical challenges of existence so you should you need to be doing some physical practice because that's that's just essential that's essential to life um, and, you know, again, everything, you've got to come back to the idea of the telephone. You can make any kinds of calls with a mobile device. You can participate in, in awesome conversations or crappy conversations. And it, that really is about you. So 
it's not about the device. And so we, we have to, the, a yoga practice can be awful. I've been to yoga classes where I, I literally want to vomit on my way out because they were just so aggressive and offensive and, you know, people just so righteous and, you know, there's that. And then there's the class where it's like, hey, let's bend over and breathe and kind of do this together. And, and so I, I feel like that's all about our own flow. So forgiveness is about creating space and then filling that space with what you want. Hmm. Health, right? Health is about, yeah, that's the only purpose for forgiveness. You're clearing this. You're just like, Zoop, I'm letting that go. So I can bring in what I want and therefore focus my consciousness, my awareness, my flow on what I want. Those are, that's the thing. Your body has to be in shape. Your diet has to be good because those are two things that will destroy you faster than anything. Um, and then every day before I go to sleep and when I wake up in the morning, I make sure that I'm letting go of the crap that didn't serve me and focusing on what I want. Mm -hmm. And so that, and what I want is, I want my consciousness to as much as possible be in the flow, in the flow of the universe. I think you said be in alignment with the flow of the universe? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I want that too. <laughs> yeah. So I know no matter what, whatever my financial situation is, no matter what, I want, I want my consciousness in a state of flow, openness, suppleness, and expansion. Expansion. And and people th people always think I'm younger than I am because like my energy and consciousness man it's supple it's like boom drop it new thing sh 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 fast you know i'm not holding on to anything it's always like what's what's next what's the other thing and the places where i am holding on to things are going to be places where i still believe in scarcity mm. so in order to believe in prosperity, the paradox is you need to believe in prosperity. Mm -hmm. Right? It's like, it's like there's a lot of people who don't believe in prosperity who are trying to get to prosperity. So you got to yeah. believe in it. You know, and what does it mean to believe in it? It's just, you know, it's just, I'm open. Yeah. Well, it's I mean, like, sometimes for me, for me, it's been even just like being able to, okay, I recognize prosperity is a thing or not even is a thing, but I recognize prosperity in other people. Sometimes I haven't had the ability to like recognize my own quote prosperity, but I've had the ability to look out into the world and see individuals like yourself who are vibrating at a certain resonance that to me symbolizes prosperity. And so when I see you do it, which is why you're here, it's like, how, <laughs> how did you do it? Um, I know it's possible and I'm going to inquire with you about that because I know it's not as abstract as my mind can make it. It's not something that's out of my reach. Um, it doesn't mean that I'm not worthy because I don't have it or whatever, whatever things might be narratives might be going on um so I'm, I'm tethering this interview to you because of i see that you have embodied prosperity um totally. and to and to me what that what that means for me i'll just define that so for anyone who's watching because i know we all have different definitions of that is that you are wealthy in your sense of calm peace integrity passion, vitality, health, um, many more things, and also experience a sense of liberation in your relation and, and ease and 
uh, abundance with regards to your monetary flow as well. So those things yeah. are integrated in your life yeah. and you experience pleasure in both of them. And so that to me is prosperity. Uh, yeah. That's a, it's that's, not so much about the amount. Perfect, but <laughs> yeah. That's a perfect definition. It's, and it's really, it, it isn't about the amount. Yeah. So here's another way to think about it. Um, all humans, all humans are, have like a number where they feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and that number is just the, the idea that, you know, with X dollars, I'm good. Like in like I'm I'm fine, right? So if I know, let's just say, randomly, just picking a number, you know, if I make five k a month, and that's just kind of flowing in through stuff that I love to do or through sessions or whatever, you know, whatever it is, um, there, that five k, there is no difference between that person who has the five k flowing in and the billionaire, honestly. Yeah. Fundamentally, it's just the flow of money flowing. And yeah, the billionaire could maybe go buy a, you know, a brownstone, but is that really what you want? You know what I mean? So, so fundamentally day to day, you can buy the groceries you need, pay for your gas, do the thing, pay the rent, have space, take some time to spend with friends, have time to meditate and do that there's no fundamental difference. And so part of it is also thinking differently about how you think about flow. Because there is, it's identical. I was meditating. I had, a, I had two students with me recently. I, I, I do, part of, part of how I work is I have a mystery school and I teach in the mystery school about a lot of these things, you know, obviously in much greater depth and we'll, we'll do, lots of uh oh there's lots of homeworks and things in that but I, I have these two students in the mystery school and they, they happen to be both side by side and one is kind of a much more unstable in their how they feel about money and i have this billionaire who just did like a five billion dollar exit out of his company and i'm sitting next to both of them doing this meditation and I'm like, oh, the difference is only on the level of cash flow. They're both messed up in different ways. You know, person on the left is messed up on their spiritual path because they think money is bad. Billionaire is messed up because he thinks identity, his identity is tied to being a billionaire. So, but fundamentally, they're identical in what their needs are, which is they want to feel good and they don't want to be thinking about the flow and movement of cash. Mm -hmm. Right. That's, I mean, and, and as I was looking at them energetically, you know, said person on left needs five grand a month, said person on right needs 50 grand a month. But if they have that and it's flowing, they're they're identical there's yeah. you know what i mean that's the, yeah. that's the paradox there's no there's literally no difference between the two then they're just left with their mind and their minds are messed up in different ways but but fundamentally that's all really anybody wants they, they don't want to they everybody's where people get messed up is they're worried about the future and not having coconuts to feed you know themselves or any of yeah. the streets or like that so there's a lot of things going on here at this moment in time because this question and how we think about money is going it, it has to radically change and not necessarily even in a revolutionary way just simply the fact that jobs are going to be they're they're not going to be neat they'll just disappear because there are going to be so many things that can be much 
that function much better if they're automated. And so you're going to have people with free time and this idea of I'm going to hoard all the money, which is really coming from our ancient history, that will have to change because there's no reason to hoard at the Anything. level that people are hoarding. <laughs> yeah there's just no reason so now we're, we so we will have to figure things out where what happens if for example there's a ubi a universal basic income or uh you know something where people are just not worrying about that five thousand dollars coming in let's say what do they do because because creativity human creativity is locked up in the nine to five work hard and suffer mm -hmm. paradigm and if we're in that paradigm we will never solve problems of climate change and you know ubis and all yeah. of the you know, social media and all this stuff this stuff has to be done in an entirely different way and that's the part that the old paradigm of hoarding your coconuts was keeping us from and that has to change because the problem with hoarding your coconuts is you hoard them and then you die and you haven't spent anything and you haven't done any good to help anything so then you're just kind of an asshole who has a bunch of coconuts and like what does that get you yeah so that's that that's the transition we're in you know it's the and i don't know how long that's going to take but we have more than enough wealth more than enough food there's problems to solve. Water is going to be a huge problem to solve. Climate change, a huge problem to solve. There's probably, you know, there's probably problems to solve that we don't even know are problems yet. Yeah. I'm sure there are, you know. So all of that stuff has to be unleashed. But the old paradigm that we're talking about was just like, keep your nose to the grindstone, you know, get married, white picket fence, nose to the grindstone, have kids live together, live a good life, die, go get your rewards in heaven. But that mythology, technology has kind of wiped that mythology out. So that's kind of really the social crisis we're in. And mm -hmm. you're only just seeing the very beginning of it. Um, so it's important for us to have these conversations because it's not a question of spiritual versus material it's a question of human beings finding purpose meaning clarity a way to live in harmony and in abundance yeah while honoring the fact that no not everybody is going to believe what you believe which is fine by me i don't care but yeah. but don't don't put your don't put your psychological poo on my plate yeah you, you and me. And the evolution of spirituality is that if you have less than you need, you're actually, it's not necessarily helping <laughs> anyone or anybody or anything. And that's for me, at least the transition into this new paradigm of leadership is coming from a sense of, and a knowingness of sovereignty and like how we are all really self-responsible for creating what we want to see in the world. And that's part of the intention of having this uh, call, this interview, this series, because it's going to take each individual deciding what is that transformation personal for themselves. And then to just do that so much so that it will eventually become an extension to others. Um, but I don't, I just think that suffering in the light of oh i'm suffering for us all kind of thing is like an old an old outdated form of spirituality like spiritual devotion and this is me just making ideas and statements but i just see that um yeah going out in the cave and being alone and isolated from the world is less common nowadays as a way of service and like spiritual attainment 
and it's more practical to learn how to be forgiving, accepting, compassionate, supple, strong, while being in the world and exactly. exploring its challenges and finding new, more innovative ways of being human. Yep. Um, Lawrence, is there anything, I heard you said mystery school, which that's really awesome. I know you teach at retreats and you do a lot of different teaching. So is there anything about what you're currently, how you're currently supporting others that you feel like you want to share any recent or relevant works that people can participate in with you? Um, it's, it's actually, I mean, it's, it's more, it's, it's not necessarily intentional, but I, you know, I think my, what I'm doing tends to speak to the few, not the many. Mm. Um, Cause it's, it's pretty intensive things that I like exploring and there, and there are things that are very um, outside of the box of sort of standard thinking. Yeah. I, I eat it's around spirituality or around materialism or sexuality or whatever. Um, and so, so my mystery school is, which is really what I'm excited about. Um, it's a, it's a nonprofit that I've been, you know, have been working, putting together for quite a long time. And, um, it's just like, that's the place where I do want to give people opportunities to handle, uh, trauma, handle, um, shift and rearranging their brain around things. So ultimately I'm working towards creating the, the balance between technology and spiritual practice and utilizing the best of all the things we have available to change our brains and our minds for a, a better, more connected, empowered life. So that's what I'm excited about. That's what I'm working on. And um, I will, you know, I do, I do do uh, videos that'll appear on YouTube or let's say, Insta, and I, um, and I'll also do calls like from time to time for people to just come and meditate and kind of clear space. So there's no easy way to, uh, There's like no easy way to um, necessarily participate with what I'm doing. Okay. But if somebody's if somebody's interested, you could always like you know email or connect through my website or whatever. And you know, as I'm 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 a little bit like a mad shaman, not paying as much attention to technology as I probably should, but I just can't. <laughs> so so. So, uh, uh, you know, unfortunately, as you know, it's kind of like people really have to track me down. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's not, it's just, it's just because like, like, I'm not, I want to find the people that are really, like, really, yeah, so, really, really, like. So if I'm really, really interested in your mystery school and I'm super dedicated, I'll track you down. And if I'm interested in just like poking around more, I can find some YouTube videos of you exactly. That's um, right. sharing some a stuff. A lot of YouTube. A lot and of YouTube. You do and have stuff. social media contacts, but uh, we may get to experience fairy dust responses from you or not. <laughs> exactly. Based on where you are in the world and all the other things you're doing too. Yeah. So. That's that's the most concise that anybody has ever. So thank you for nailing that. That is 100% <laughs> true. And, That's okay. Um, I like your fairy dust. And I'm really grateful that you've shared some of your fairy dust here with, with us, whoever is watching and myself and um, all the, all the relevant fairy dust links will be provided for you. And is there anything you want to say before ending it? This has been really powerful for me and I, will be digesting yeah, here, it here's what i have to say let's let's really summarize 
a technique. Okay. Before we go. Number one, get into a med meditative state, whatever works for you. Um, I typically like to do it first thing in the morning as I'm waking up last thing at night before I go to sleep. Get into a meditative state. Um, be willing, be at least willing to forgive and release everyone and everything that has come along to screw you on your path. <laughs> right, so we kind of want to really just let go of all the stuck, sticky places because that's not who you are anyway. So if it's not who you are, then you might as well let it go. So you let that go through forgiveness, blessing, releasing, whatever. That then creates space, which you then focus this new creative prosperous, energized, empowered energy on and with. And so you forgive and release to let go and create space. You then focus on what you want and fill that space with what you want and then let it go. So what you're really doing is you're cultivating states of consciousness that include prosperity abundance and all the things that you want. And that's the beauty of the exercise that I will leave you with. And then, you know, and then if you're doing that on a regular basis over the course of 90 days, your consciousness will change. You will change the way you relate to, to all of it. And you got to be, you know, the only thing I'll tell you is you got to be consistent, but do it for yourself. You'll see if you're just consistent, not in a moral way, but just in the way of like understanding that if I really start to work the muscle of my thinking that includes abundance and prosperity, and I'm willing to let go all the stuff that didn't serve me and doesn't serve me, those two things will create a new a new sort of petri dish of your psyche and then you'll see what to do from there but it's hard to get there if dragging your past along so that's that's basically it in a nutshell well thank you um, I have some work to do on forgiving. Oh, we all do. Everybody does. That's fine. Yeah. And I hear the consistency part as being ultra crucial because um, it's just that it's not going to go away. It's just, if it's there, it's there. And it's going to be there until we forgive it and release it. So um, it's also a process. And it's not necessarily an overnight thing. Exactly. Yeah. Just take, you know, be gentle. That's the only other thing is like really be gentle with yourself in this process. It's a process. Yeah. Life is a process. Be gentle. Be kind. Treat yourself with sweetness. Yay. Yeah. I need sweetness and everyone needs sweetness. <laughs> yep. Yes, we do. So there you go. So thank you so much, though, for inviting me. This has been great. Always a pleasure. And uh, thank you for sharing little fairy dust crumbles along the way for folks. <laughs> and um, yeah, I will, you know, Instagram's a good way to find me too, by the way. Instagram, okay, follow you on Instagram. Yeah, that's a pretty good, uh, it's a pretty good, it just is an, is an accessible platform, so. Okay. Yeah. You post on Instagram. Cool. Following you on Instagram now. Fantastic. All right. Well, we'll talk soon. We will and, talk soon. Uh, sending lots of love and abundance and prosperity to everybody. And I'm going to do a meditation right now. And I'm going to send that 
energy and prosperity and abundance and that sh shift in consciousness to everybody who has participated in this experience, yourself included. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. It is my pleasure. And Jenny. until we speak again, Fantastic. have a beautiful day. Thank you, you too. Thank you.